here at MD Anderson. History is being made today. 75 years from now, this period will be viewed as a major turning point for the field. Ideas come from really having a passion to understand how things work. I've been fascinated by T-cells ever since they were discovered. We questioned what the paradigm was because there were other people working on the same molecule and said it was a positive molecule. You know, I just didn't necessarily believe that. And I said, this is an off switch. If we just disable it temporarily, well, they could kill the tumor cells. That was the sort of aha moment when I thought about it, but, you know, I had a lot of thoughts that were wrong. <laughs> Because of all the failure, there's a lot of skepticism, even contempt, that the immune system could be used to attack cancer. It's a process of, you know, essentially finding directions, using the globe as an analogy. First, which continent you should go to. Within that continent, sort of, is it towards the north, south, east, west? You hopefully find clues working with more families to get to country, county, street and eventually down to the, the house level, if you will. And that's how you sort of do it. BRC1 took four years, almost solid work to, to identify. BRC2 took a year. The difference in that is solely down to the availability of DNA sequence across large regions of the genome. People don't have to worry about that sort of grunt work. The heavy lifting stuff is basically done in terms of having that level of, of information available, almost as, 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 as given. We've entered into this era of information. The ability to aggregate large volumes of data that allow us to generate new hypotheses and push the frontiers of medicine. When the first human genomes were sequenced, they cost billions of dollars. Now we can sequence an entire tumor genome for a thousand dollars or less. The ability to process large amounts of genomic information and identify the variation and then move that quickly into you know, very well-defined statistical approaches to detecting signal amongst the noise is vastly empowered how we approach the problem. Compared to 20 years ago or 50 years ago, we know a lot more about its biology, how it evolves, how it grows, how it spreads. We're building knowledge based on the work of people that did this before us. Now that we've had these breakthroughs, the breakthroughs of genomic profiling, of new targeted drugs, and immunotherapy, what we have to figure out is how do we apply them? MD Anderson is the world's cancer center. Collectively, we influence the care of one-third of the human population. We also have the largest clinical trials engine in the world. The numbers of patients that are seen here makes doing studies under the roof, as it were, practical. It's not just having the technology, but it's asking what specific clinical scenario do we want to focus on. I see pathways. Where can I hit which particular protein in the nucleus, in the cytoplasm? I have these five treatment options, and we have data from 20,000 patients. Cancer is very complex. I think we need uh, a lot of resources. We need the opportunity for the smart people to interact with each other, to learn from each other. Our Cancer Moonshot is a goal-oriented effort to harness that collective wisdom across many different disciplines. We've got 20,000 brains that are all focused on the same thing, attacking cancer from many different angles, using advocacy, the legislature, early detection. Prevention really represents the penultimate approach to disease across the spectrum. More than 50% of cancers are preventable. There is a great deal of opportunity. What they should eat, how they should eat, how can exercise benefit? It's not only what happens in, in between these walls, it's what we do to share this and improve the care of everybody. Our vision for the MD Anderson Cancer Network is to provide access to more patients on a global scale to make the next innovation and the next breakthrough. 75 years from now, I believe that we're going to have a very clear understanding of what instigates cancer in the first place and major opportunities to prevent the disease from happening. Reducing the mortality, changing what were, you know, almost inevitably lethal diseases into diseases that can be managed over a period of time. The first patient I met was in about 2006. I walked in the room and there was this woman and her husband and her parents and she was about 24 years old. She'd been diagnosed with metastatic melanoma and it failed everything. It was basically hospice bound. And uh, she uh, you know, was treated with the, the drug that I developed and uh, her tumors completely disappeared. And when I met her, it was the first year she came back. She'd been tumor free for a year. And I formed a friendship with her and uh, she now has two children, one eight, one nine. She's about 12 years out, so she's doing fine. She's a marathon runner. 
That, that sort of thing is what it's all about, actually. History has taught us that if we put our mind and will to a task, we can and will succeed. We did it with the atom, we did it with the moon, we did it with the human genome, and we're gonna get it done with this disease.